of two teams playing 16 straight games without a break. We, I mean, with the Dolphins, it's even worse. They, I'm, uh, if I'm correct, they traveled to London for one of their games, and that's going to be yes. even more brutal. They were supposed to get a bye after that game, but now they're traveling to, traveling to London without and coming back, no break. For the Bucks, probably not quite as bad, but still, 16 straight weeks. Nobody should be, no one's getting excited about that. Um, I mean, obviously, there was a very good reason why they didn't you know, play week one, but at, at this point now, when it comes to just football, no one's looking for like no one on either one of those teams is looking forward to the next 16 weeks. Yeah. And not, and, and you said exactly where I was going to go is that, yeah, the, the dolphins have to go to London. Uh, and like you say, they normally follow up. Some teams have, you know, decided not to, you know, go with a buy, you know, after going to London, but it's just, it's an option. It's an option. They don't have anymore. Uh, you don't have an option of if someone gets injured, maybe using that week as a, a week of, you know, getting healthier, you got to play, you know, the following week. And and the thing that I didn't get, you know, because they were saying that um, they were looking at a neutral site of playing in uh, at Heinz Field or um, Lincoln Financial. Um, and I didn't get, why would you go to Pennsylvania when the Falcons were on the road last week and you could have had that game here in Atlanta because I don't think anything was going on on Sunday. So uh, I, I I was totally lost by that. You know, it seems like they, they said they didn't have any, you know, options or whatever. Yeah, I, I think part of it was uh, just the sheer logistics of moving an entire NFL game. They didn't want – that just simply wasn't possible. But I think Atlanta was may not have been really excited at the prospect of two teams that weren't the Atlanta Falcons playing in their stadium, you know, their brand-new stadium. That I think that was just something that neither the, the Falcons nor the NFL really wanted to do. Um, that, and that just came down to, in, in any case, not having the logistical ability to move the entire game. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I have Convo Wakano on here because he points out these points. Because I would have said, I told, I said, play in Atlanta, and then you're absolutely right. They would have played in Atlanta, and I would have been mad, and then I, I would have just been the person to blame. I would have blamed myself because I made the suggestion. So that that makes all the sense in the world. So uh, tomorrow we have a, a football game. Uh, Bengals versus the Texans, and and at this point, uh, it was gonna. The question was gonna be whether Watson or Savage to start, but they decided to play Watson. So, it, is this a good decision by the Houston Texans to just go ahead and, and, and throw them in there and see what happens? Yeah, I mean, it's a good decision to play Watson, but this is a decision they should have made back in the uh, in training camp. I don't know why they even bothered thinking that Tom Savage would be their guy during the season. Watson would, you know, back him up for any length of time. Tom Savage, what has he ever done? He has, he currently holds the, you know, in terms of all active uh, uh, quarterbacks in the NFL who's thrown, who've thrown passes, he has the longest streak without a touchdown pass. He still has yet to throw a touchdown pass in the NFL. He's, he's like having, he's hype without any upside. There's nothing, you're not going to get anywhere with him. I mean, sure, Watson is very raw. He's uh, obviously not, you know, really where you want him to be as a starting quarterback, but they're still better off giving, you know, their potential franchise quarterback snaps, you know, some game experience versus some guy who's, you know, pretty much just going to, at best, going to manage the game. He's not going to win a game for you, and he never has. So why would you play him? I mean, but again, this is a decision they should have made months ago and give Watson more time with their starting offense. At this point, uh, you know, obviously Bill O'Brien has done this before. We've seen this before, and it's not going to end well. Yeah, and, and, and just like you said, we've seen this before, and, and it seems like Bill O'Brien has a, a, a quick uh, hook, you know, to, to pull a guy, but, you know, to pull a guy that, People have already thought, you know, shouldn't have been even in the in the place of getting pulled in the first place, you know. Uh, so you make make valid points, very valid points uh, here, uh, Mr. Cano. So uh, again, you listen to the Wait a Minute Show with my special guest Jason Cano uh, joining us for some football talk. So uh, the Arizona Cardinals has lost their best player in David Johnson. They're expecting him to be back. Hopefully, Arian says, 
by Christmas, which still puts, I think that's like week 16, so they're obviously expecting to make the playoffs. Is their season finished without David Johnson? Um, I wouldn't say it was the, it's finished without David Johnson. I don't think they're going to get far with David Johnson. Um, Carson Palmer is on the downside of his career. He's just gotten worse with every passing season. The defense, uh, yeah, that secondary might be the best in football, but the front seven, not quite. Or, like, you've got good edge rushers, but you lose your best defensive lineman, Clay Campbell, and now – you, I don't even know the guy that like they replaced him with somebody off somebody's practice squad. I think I don't even know, but it, it it's the, the they didn't do very well last year. I don't think they added enough pieces this year to expect them to do any better. Um, yeah, David Johnson's pretty much the best person, the uh, best player on their team, with maybe the exce- exception of the Honey Badger or Patrick Peterson. But uh, offensively, he's definitely their best player. Um, it, it definitely hurts, but. You know, I didn't really have a whole lot of high expectations for them otherwise. Um, it, I think they would have maybe taken one of their games with Seattle, maybe. Um, and with the way the, the Rams were looking last week, I, I honestly don't think that they were going to get very far with David Johnson. So it, it was kind of a, you know, fantasy-wise, it would have been bad. But, you know, overall, actual football on the field-wise, you know, it – yeah, their 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 window might have already closed. To be honest, now you say a window uh, has closed, but at this point, after one week, it looked like a window has opened up for another team, and, and that's the Minnesota Vikings. So they look really good. You know, of course, uh, Monday against the New Orleans Saints. But, you know, some people are saying, well, this was the Saints. You know, uh, their defense is not that great. You know, uh, for the team, but. Is Minnesota actually finally real? Uh, you know, we got Sam Bradford. You know, now he's, he's actually there for training camp. He's not in that situation, you know, starting off. But, you know, that, uh, to me, I think that defense, you know, wore down over the season. So now with this Sam Bradford being there, and, and it seems like this offense might be running with Dalvin Cook, are they real this year? Um, I think they're definitely real. It's kind of hard to argue with the defensive what what the defense looked like um against the Saints a you know a historically very potent offense especially with Drew Brees as the quarterback but uh I think the addition of Dalvin Cook um uh, makes a big difference the addition of left tackle Riley Reif is a huge upgrade to an offensive line that was probably the worst in football last year um and really the, the entire offense has kind of meshed around Sam Bradford Sam Bradford last week looked like the first overall pick from 2010, like he was supposed to be. Um, it's it, with that defense. And if they, you know, Sam Bradford continues to play like that, um, they could contend for that NFC South or I'm sorry, NFC North title, uh, even with the Packers. So we'll see. Um, I think they, they could very much uh, turn some heads. Yeah, I and and there's a guy um that Monday night he actually, you know, he had he had a really good season last year and Adam Thielen that that had a real good uh performance on Monday night. So to me, I I agree. You know, he you got your number 1 receiver which is Stefan Diggs and then you got your number 2 and you go with Kyle, Kyle Rudolph and just like you said Dalvin Cook. This run game seems to be legit. You know, and the line seems like they played played a lot better. So as as this season goes on, we're definitely definitely going to pay attention a little more to the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, this uh, weekend, uh, I think probably the game that will be paid attention to most uh, will be this Falcons versus Packers. Um, this is third round, if you will, because they played in the regular season. Also, they played in the NFC, you know, championship game and and. Falcons want a win is a win, you know, but we know that the Packers was a little hurt, you know, on, on defense. Uh, and the first game was, was kind of, you know, uh, not back and forth, but it was a little bit of a barn burner. So uh, I'm thinking it's this game Sunday night where everyone is going to be watching. And just like you said, that first game for the Falcons uh, in the new stadium is going to be going down that night. Will this be a barn burner? 
I think you have every uh, ever it's every right to expect that it would be. You have two of the most potent off- offenses in the NFL um, with defenses that aren't necessarily suffocating, but very opportunistic. Um, guys are, you know, they they uh, you know thrive on turnovers, big plays. Um, but they're not like, say, like Seattle's defensive line last week, which basically just shut down the entire game uh, for for Green Bay. Atlanta doesn't have that kind of defensive line, but, you know, that secondary, especially with uh, the cornerbacks that you guys have, it's, you know, I think you might see a couple of picks on both sides, uh, just given the kind of play that you're going to see. Um, I mean, Matt Ryan versus, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers, that's going to, you're going to see a, a good number of scores on one way or the other. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Convo with Kano, my man Jason Kano. Uh, we appreciate you spending a little time with us, man, giving you uh, football insights. So, we thank you so much. Uh, again, we'll have you on again during a, you know another week, and we'll break down some other you know news and analysis and everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. And I get the kids in here. You know, I always bring the kids. They should be in the bed right now. But kids, get in here and give it up for Mr. Kano for dropping us with the knowledge. So we appreciate that, sir. Uh, And then we will talk with you at a later date, okay? All right. Sounds great. Thanks for having me on. No problem. We always love to have you on. So have a great night. All right. You too. All right. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, again, man. First, we had the Mad Barber with Fredo Alicia, and then Convo with Kano. He dropping these jewels. Both of them dropping jewels, you know, on you uh, about boxing, MMA, and the NFL. So I I told y'all, I I reached out. I get these folks on. I'm going to reach out to them again, bring them back. Bring them back, bring them back, bring it back. So uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to take a break for a second, and then we'll come back, and we'll get in a little bit more, you know, football talk with Thursday night football, but also I'll go back to some of your comments that you made in the chat during during the interview. So sit back, relax, and we'll come back in just a moment. Hey, what's up, sports fans? You looking for a different type of sports talk show? something you haven't heard before you gotta check out the bs3 sports show every other saturday on two live stews radio 1 p.m central time 2 p.m eastern sports talk at its finest always have great guests playing some good hip-hop you don't want to miss it make sure to tune in to the bs3 sports show every other saturday at 1 p.m central time 2 p.m eastern Hey, what's up, everybody? Vince Wright, the sports governor from the great state of Minnesota. Join the rest of us sports zombies on Two Live Stews Radio. That's right, the boys are back. Doug, Ryan, and the rest of us, including me, the sports governor of Minnesota, Vince Wright, also known to the ladies as the Big Smooth. Keep it tuned here. That's right, Two Live Stews Radio. Yo, this is your boy, KC, from the Kicking It With KC Show. Show. When I want to jam, I'm jamming with Queen Josie and DJ New New as they're kicking those vibes. We don't take orders from super fools. We give them any and all resistance to a crumble. Nonsense. There's never been a threat. Couldn't handle. It is the purpose of the to align our infamous forces against the powers of good and defeat them, leaving us the rulers of the world. Yo, what's good? This is Trey Frazier on the staff. This is the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Make sure y'all tune in to us every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Uh, you are listening to... It's the Wait a Minute Show. Bam! Uh, and we just had the Mad Barber, Rufredo Alicia, and my man Jason Cano, uh former sports writer for Bleacher Report, dropping these jewels on y'all. So, like I said, we're going to go back into the chat, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and talk about a little bit of the uh, what we just... 